Hey, I'm Jeff Keeley here in Boston to go behind the scenes to hear some untold stories about the making of Bioshock with Ken Levine and Sean Robertson. Let's talk a bit about the theme and setting of Bioshock Rapture. Uh, and I think a lot of people, when they played the game for the first time, Ken, they wondered, how did you even dream up this place? And I know you've said publicly before that part of the reason you sort of, l what led you to Rapture was this idea of fully simulating a place. Uh, tell us about that sort of idea and the frustrations you had with other games where there, you sort of hit a bound. I think our philosophy is, was always to do what we were doing 100% rather than try to do something bigger and do it 50% or 40%. So one of the ideas of, you know, and this sort of came from System Shock 2 as well, where you focus on an area that you can really bring to life and you kind of eliminate the questions of, well, why can't I go over the bridge to New Jersey? So we were able to really make a place, I think, that felt believable and real, even though in actuality it was really quite limited. But we just sort of dressed it with all these buildings outside that were all, you know, they were all basically glorified fakes. It let the story drive 
what we needed to show rather than some kind of like predetermined map which we sat down, which is a little different than like System Shock 2 where we actually mapped a spaceship out deck by deck. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't know what the, the philosophy felt a little different there because you want to feel like a real spaceship that was, that was sort of stacked on top of each other. But Rapture was free to sprawl across the ocean floor. Although you guys originally, Sean, were talking about doing this game on a sort of spaceship again, right? Yeah, when we first started talking about what the spiritual successor to System Shock 2 was going to be, Spaceship came up, but again, you know, we, we wanted a limited environment and we didn't necessarily want to do Spaceship again. And our first actual exploration of the space was underwater, but ultimately ended up looking like a spaceship. It just happened to have a couple of you know, seaweed fronds out, outside. And that started to push us towards uh, what artistic statement that we wanted to make to make this look different and what rules we were going to set for the world. How at every turn we were going to try to remind the player that they were in fact underwater and that this wasn't a spaceship. And how, like underwater, we obviously know you did underwater, then sitting in the sky, like what, where did you come with the idea of like doing this underwater? I think there was probably a conversation. It's like, well, w what kind of places could be cut off from from yeah. other places? Yeah. It's like, well, you know, a spaceship, a summer camp, <laughs> uh, you know, like yeah. any island notion, right? Something that's cut off from the rest of the world. Yeah. So you never felt like you should be able to go over that bridge to New Jersey. I don't want to apply some deep and meaningful conversation. I think it was one of those ideas that you just kind of say, and then everybody, oh, that well, sounds cool. Let's try that. Let's that. let's right. go for it. And, and it, I think it lended itself to having very nice views out the window without having to build an insane amount of unique assets. Right. By today's standards, we still were a small team back then. And there's an expectation that because you're underwater, the view distances are going to be short. So you can really kind of fade out into the fog at a short distance and not have the expectation that, why can't I see forever? So there's a lot of limitations in a good way that we put on ourselves by, by being underwater, as opposed to like if you're on a cruise ship, then you'd expect to see across the water and we'd have to deal with that. Same thing with an island. Or and you're a city in the sky. Where yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which was a lot more complicated. Yeah. yeah. So you, you came up with the idea of let's do this underwater, let's do this sort of They told me, son, you're special. You were born to do great things. You know what? They were right.
I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. The artist would not be a censor, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small. And with the sweat of your brow, rapture can become your city as well. Report me! 
Like he just had his cherry popped. Wonder if he's still got some Adam on him. Yeah. Let's park quick. You're a weak chopper. This little fish ain't worth telling it with no big daddy. Yellow always have been. You'll be no better off with a metal daddy, little fish. See you floating.
Are you here to hurt? Hands up! Thank <laughs> you. 